Bible you. Don't you? <laughs> Man, all righty. Good evening. It's good to be here tonight. And I want to welcome those of you on the internet and those that's been in here for prayer time tonight. Um, we're going to we're going to go look at a, a passage of scripture in Second uh, Corinthians tonight, and um, I'm actually going to look at one little thought. I'm going to I'm going to tell you some things here in a minute about that one little thought, but um, uh, going to going to deal with just one little idea. But uh, as we go there to Second Corinthians, let let me just give you some things, some background of of, of the letter here to, to the Corinthian church or the Corinth, church at Corinth. Um, when I was in school and I took Pauline epistles, uh, when we got to, to first and second Corinthians, my teacher, he said, it's actually first Corinthians and third Corinthians or 1 Corinthians and 3rd and 4th Corinthians. And, and so he showed us why he said that. But basically, Paul is interacting with, with, and there's a reason I'm telling you this, but he's interacting with the church at Corinth. And so they reached out to him, and it was probably uh, by messenger, not by letter, but by messenger. And he had heard from the house of Cleo that there was a problem there. Okay, and so the letter of 1 Corinthians lays out all these sins of, that was going on at the church at Corinth. They were divisions among them. Uh, they were raising up men higher than God would raise them up, and they were, they were honoring men more than God, and so he brought that out. Uh, they were uh, misusing the idea of baptism, and he brought that out, and... Uh, uh, they were misusing their spiritual gifts, and uh, they were uh, they were desiring gifts that that uh, that Paul said was not the greatest of gifts, and um, there was uh, fornication going on in the church, and he brought that out, and uh, there was a division as far as there was people. Uh, not sharing with other people. They were not distributing like they should. And so he brought all these different things out in 1 first, first Corinthians. All right, so then the idea is they corresponded back with him. And most people think that he corresponded back with them. And then they corresponded back with him again. And then we have 2 Corinthians, which is actually 3rd or 4th Corinthians. Okay, and it's, it's probably a, a couple of letters together. Okay, and so so now let me I'm I'm I like to say I got a reason for everything I just said. So so let me say why why didn't we have all the correspondence in between there? Well, God deemed it that we didn't need all that information. And so that is not inspired. Okay, even though the Apostle Paul wrote it, it's not inspired. Now, I know Laramie uh, taught uh, the other Wednesday night on, on the preservation of Scripture. And it's amazing how God preserved Scripture. That's a hard subject to teach, but it's amazing how He preserved Scripture. He superintended protecting that Scripture. And we have a great, reliable copy of, of the inspired words of God that we can rely on, okay? We do. And, and so if they were to find these, these correspondence, they're still not inspired. You might learn something from them, but they're not inspired, okay? Because God didn't superintend to keep those, okay? So I just want to say that. Now, there's, there's some reasons that I'm backing up on that. When, when you are looking at a passage of Scripture, uh, us preachers, a lot of times, we preach so much and we preached everything we know and we preached everything they taught us in school and everything that we've read in a book and, and we're out of things to preach. We go find places in the Bible that's obscure. 
<laughs> and we come back and we try to bring something out. And what they teach you to do in school is to look at the big picture. Look at the look at what what is being highlighted in the script. What what is it that Paul is trying to do right here? So I'm going to tell you that because that's not where we're going today. All right, Paul. As we get down into chapter seven, we won't go there today. But as as you go through chapter seven here, he's going to praise the church at Corinth for handling the sin and resp and the people for responding right to the church. Okay, that's the big idea there. That's what he's dealing with. That's not what we're going to deal with. Okay, we're going to deal with one of them little obscure things. All right. So now, with that said, look with me in chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises. All right. If we were to go back, I was doing this a while ago, and I, I had done it some today. I'd read through it and, and looked at some stuff. But if we were to go back through all of the all of the things that have been said so far in Second uh, Corinthians, here's just some of the promises that you would find. In chapter 1, verse 4, you would find comfort in tribulation. In chapter 1, verse 22, we're, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Chapter 2, verse 14, we always triumph in Christ. Chapter 3, verse 17, we have liberty in Christ. Chapter 4, verse 17, our light affliction, those things that we're going through, is temporary. And in chapter 5, almost the entire chapter is we don't have fear in death and we are ministers of the new covenant. And then when you get to chapter 6, it's kind of the summary of everything. And then we come to chapter 7 and Paul says, having therefore these promises, all these promises I've talked about, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, in reverence in God. Okay, now I, would, I want you, I want to go on now. Verse 2, receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are our hearts to die and to live with you. All right, now, this is the verse I want to look at. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory in, uh, of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Now, if we were to go back, I, I want you to just hold your place there. Go back to chapter 1, just one minute. I want you to see something in chapter 1. I, I, I told you we had comfort in tribulation, starting in verse 4. I want you to look at it. Who comfort us, talking about God, the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abound by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering, which we also suffer. For, uh, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Okay. So Paul's talking about, about this suffering and these tribulations that, the, that folks is having now. Here's where I want to go with this thing. We think, I think, and I, I, I'm going to be speaking for all of us. You may not think this, but most of the people I've ever talked to feel this way. Feel like when bad things come our way, when things don't go just like we think they ought to go, God's angry with us. God's mad with us. Yeah? Now, and that's... That's this re reward-based uh, idea that we have in America now. You know, if your kids do good in school, you give them a brownie or something or $10 or something for A. 
I never got them. I got a whooping when I got a D. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I tried not to get a whooping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, but uh, that, that's the mindset of our, our society now. And so it's, it's carried over to us. If, if bad things has happened to me or if things ain't happening the way I think they ought to happen, then God's angry with me. And, and before long, we get to trying to reason with God and say, look, Lord, I tithe. Matter of fact, I give a little extra, you know. And, and, and man, I help that dude over there I don't even like, you know. And, and, and I, I'm up to date on my, on my Bible reading, my daily devotions. I, I read every day. I, I'm, I'm ahead even. And, and I'm, praying for, I'm praying for people I don't like. I mean, I'm doing everything right, you know. And I even give a cup of water to that guy that was thirsty the other day. He probably throwed half of it out. But I gave it to him, you know. And and why are you doing this to me? Now, that's our mindset. And that's the way I feel sometimes. Now, that may not be the way y'all feel, but it's the way I feel sometimes. And I believe most people have that idea that when things are not going right, then God's angry, okay? And uh, if we look at this passage of Scripture and we look at what we read in chapter 1 and we look at other places, I mean, there's a lot of other places about our suffering, that's not the case with God. And it's not the case with the New Testament. It's not the, taste, it's not the case with the grace that's been given to us. So let me give you some examples of some things. I told y'all I'm going to worry y'all to death about my trip that I had. And so let me just give you some examples. My son and I, my father died in November. And almost immediately they started talking about uh, me getting his motorcycle. All right. So my son came to me and he said, if you get that motorcycle, we need to go out west. He said, you and your daddy never got to do it. You waited too long. He couldn't do it, and and now you ain't gonna get to do it with him. And I don't want to do that. I, I I can I can put in for vacation. You know, we, we got plenty of time. We can plan it. Let's go. So we've been planning this trip pretty much since November, and we have watched God's hand as we went through it. Now, my son, if you, I'm gonna get political, but it's just it's just the truth. Um, if if you have tried to buy a set of tires in the last, since this administration has come in, in, into power, tires are very expensive and very hard to get, okay? They just are because of what they've done with petroleum. And so my son ordered a set of tires, and it took him like six weeks to get a set of tires for his motorcycle, all right? So... Here he is, he's got his tires on there. And um, I've been telling him and everybody's been telling him, son, you're going to love that electric glide. That thing handles so much better. It rides so much better. You're just going to love that thing. Well, he found out we were telling the truth. He's, uh, he lives up there close to mountains and he's up there carving up the curves, you know. And, and he just throwing that thing around and really enjoying that motorcycle. And you said tires. Well, he ate up them tires. Okay. <laughs> And we were planning on getting a set of tires in Sturgis. Both of us was going to need a tire when we got to Sturgis. Well, all the way in the roads that we were riding on in Ohio and in Michigan, he told me when we got to the top of Michigan, he said, man, that back tire's getting slick. He said, I'm feeling it slide around. I said, well... <laughs> Long ways to Sturgis, buddy. <laughs> and and uh, so the next day he's telling me, he said, man, that tire's getting really bad. Now, this is Sunday. Now, you can't go to Walmart and buy a motorcycle tire for that thing. you got to go to a motorcycle shop and there's none open on Sunday. So we find this Harley shop that happens to be open and it's in the wrong direction. And we go down there to where it's at. And they have four tires, but they don't help us. Now, I left the Harley shop with my lip out. Now, I'm not kidding you. I wasn't happy. And uh, we're going down the road. 
And our plan, we stood out in the parking lot, we made a plan. Our plan was we're going to go head to 90, and most Harley shops are not open on Monday, but we're going to start calling Harley shops between here and Sturgis and see if we can get a tire before we get to Sturgis. If not, we're going to go to Sturgis 920 miles from now and get a tire. Okay. I'm going somewhere. Y'all just listen. So we're coming down the road, and my lips poked out. We're heading towards 90. One of the, I've got a lot of fascinations, and one of the things I'm fascinated about is the Mississippi River. I've got a lot of bucket list things I would like to do with the Mississippi River. Okay. And there we are. We're in Minnesota. And there is the Mississippi River. I see the sign. I'm going. And I'm in the back. I sure would like to stop here. If I was in front, we'd stop here. It looks like it's going to rain any minute, but I want to stop here. And all of a sudden, I see his brake lights come on. And he turns into the parking lot. I turn in behind him. We pull up there like two clowns because we got stuff piled up to here on the motorcycles. And there's three guys on bikes in there, motorcycles. And when they see the two clowns come rolling in, they got to come over there and check us out. Okay, now, now, now here's where it gets interesting. These are local guys. We told them our dilemma. They get to trying to figure out and give us phone numbers about where we can get a tire. And there, Vince is over here talking to two of them. And it's one guy that migrates to me. We get to talking, and he had lost his wife like 10 days earlier. So now i got somebody that I can comfort. God's allowed me to see something that I wanted to see, the headwaters of the Mississippi. He's meeting a need that we got right here in our trouble. And he's using me to help somebody else. Do you see where I'm going with that? You see, a lot of times in our trouble, our trouble's not there for us to just be miserable. Our trouble's there so we have to do something different. We have to have a change of plans and we become vulnerable to other people so other people get in contact with us so God can connect some dots. You, you see? And that's what happened there. All right, so, so now here we are on the side of the road, and we're talking to these guys, and we're having fun talking to these guys. One of them's phone goes, roo, 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 I mean, making all kinds of crazy noises. And he looks at it. He says, man, it says there's hail and heavy winds and, and rain, and it's coming, da 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 da, da. We got in. I mean, they vanished. Oof. I mean, it was just they disappeared. And so me and Vince is just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dark, and it's lightning, and it's ugly. And uh, we got 29 miles, I think, 27, 28, 29 miles to get to where they told us to go to. So here we go. We're going down the road. About a mile down the road, we take a right. And, I mean, we're heading right in to the dark stuff. It's black everywhere. And I promise you, it was just like God opened up the clouds and the sun shined on us for 29 miles all the way to the motel where we stayed at. We pulled up underneath the shelter, cut the motorcycle off, kicked the kickstand down, and put my foot on the ground and the bottom fell out. Boom. Walked inside. The guy said, y'all lucky. I said, God's looking after us. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with luck. <laughs> got God looking after us. Us poor dummies. The next day, Vince gets a motorcycle tire. Okay. 1030, we're on the road going back. And see, I mean, the whole time, my lip, my, I planned this my whole life, and a stupid tire I, is going to ruin my whole trip. But yet God had a different plan. And we got right back out on number two and got to see everything that we wanted to see except for one little side trip I wanted to make. But we got to see everything I wanted to see. Okay? 
That's one story. We're up in Sturgis. Now, I don't know. When you say Sturgis, everybody's got their own mindset about what goes on and what don't go on. And believe me, you could probably see whatever you wanted to see, but we didn't go there to see that. We, we spent probably, if we wouldn't have had to get our motorcycle service, we, we probably wouldn't have spent very much time at all in, inside of Sturgis. We, we, we rode through on Saturday when we got there at lunchtime and went out the backside, took our picture, and went to our, our campsite. We stayed there the rest of the day. We come back in the next day, got our bike serviced, got them cleaned up, and while they were doing that, we went and got something to eat. And we left, uh, and then uh, we went out riding. The following day, we rode probably two or 300 miles through all the uh, special rides out through there that they got, and then uh, went to Rapid City and got some food and stuff to bring back to our campsite. And then that, that night, we went back up there and bought our T-shirts and stuff. But that night, the night we went and got our T-shirts, that there's two two streets. There's Main Street. There's LaSalle Street. That's where everything happens on. You got all these little side streets. So we went over and we we bought our T-shirts where we, we had planned on buying them. We was coming back through this little side street, and God used one of my weaknesses to get my attention. We're coming down the street, and here's this sign, and it's got an ice cream cone on it. And I'm like, wow. And I'm looking at all the homemade signs they got there, all the food and drinks and stuff. And I have not seen this lady until I am looking for the price of the, and she, uh, there's a lady sitting there. And so I get to talking to her. I said, man, you know, y'all selling ice cream up in there? Yeah. I said, it's been two weeks since I had any ice cream. She said, that's too long. You need to come on up here and get one. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so I went, we went in there and we sat down with all the people in there. Nice lady. And um, so, so some other people came in and got some. She had to cook some food. And so I'm just standing out here. I'm, I'm bringing people in, you know. Uh, don't y'all want something to drink, man? Cheaper prices here than he is down the street. I guarantee it. You know, you know, we got some water up here and Dr. Pepper and lemonade. And, and, and I had all kinds of people coming in there. And she told me, she said, you're hired. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but. When things calmed down, she said something about God has a plan for everybody. And so I just looked at her. I said, so you're a Christian then? And she was set back. I mean, it just, I mean, you, you could have knocked her over with a feather. She said, well, matter of fact, I am, but I've never had nobody ask me that before. I said, you just slid that right in there. Just, you know, and, and so she's talking about that, you know, and, 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 and I say all that to say, not to brag on me, but to say, you know, here we are. We're up here just meandering along. And God uses something as simple as that to encourage this because she gets to talking about needing a witness and that kind of stuff. He, he encourages this woman here through me just asking a simple question. Okay. And again, the things that we're experiencing, the things that's going on in our life, we need to say, hey, God, what are you doing? And I know for a fact that because I asked y'all to do it, I know there was people here praying for me to have opportunities, and I tried to make good on as many of them as I could. I had failed miserably, but I tried to make good on some of them. Okay? But when we were having trouble, I wasn't looking at, the, at God using that trouble. Okay? That's where this came from. Now, one more little story, and we'll be done. We're going to Kansas because one of the largest motorcycle museums in, in America is in Kansas, and I've never been there. And so that was our plan. We're going to Kansas. We're going to the Mississippi because when I was a kid, my grandfather took me, and my cousin and my Aunt Virginia, and we went to Memphis. And we crossed the Mississippi. It was until years later, it was the only time that I'd ever went across the Mississippi. We crossed the Mississippi, and there used to be some, some uh, uh, 
picnic tables there, and my grandma opened up the back of that Dodge or Plymouth, Chrysler, I think it was Chrysler, and opened it up, and she started pulling out all that fried chicken and all that stuff that she cooked when she's back home and put up there, and we had a picnic there on the other side of the Mississippi, and I wanted to see if it was still there, and if it was still there, I wanted to take a picture of it because it was memories back when I was a kid with my grandpa, okay? And then I've got a friend in Memphis. I was going to reach out to her and see if, if she could tell me some restaurant my son could buy me a steak in for, for my birthday because he owed me a steak. And so that was why we was going that way. We're riding down the road in, in nowhere in Nebraska. Son comes by me and he goes, and he pulls off the side of the road. And, and, and his bike ain't running. So now what are we going to do? Well, we found some people right down the road there. Didn't ask them to do nothing for us young people. They were mid-30s maybe. Man, went and got a trailer, put the motorcycle on the trailer, took us uptown, got us into a motel room up there. Now, now let me back up and tell you something. Y'all going to think Marty's charismatic, and I don't care what you think. I am charismatic. I'm bad because of Okay. I'm riding down the road. It, I have a temperature, uh, uh, outside temperature gauge on my motorcycle. And it was showing me it was about 120 degrees. Now, it's not exactly right, but it's not too far off. Okay, so it showed me it's about 120 degrees coming to the, I'm dying. We're having to wear a helmet. This is one of the first times we had to wear a helmet in a long time. I had to wear a helmet, and I'm dying. And... I get, and my wife could probably tell you that this is not a, a great big thing with me, but I get to thinking, I'd love to have me a watermelon. Now, I don't eat a lot of watermelon. If I eat one every two years, I've, I've done a lot. If I see a, a place somewhere has got a watermelon, I'm going to get me a watermelon. All right, so that's what is going on in my mind about the time my son comes by me and he's broke down. <laughs> All right, so... Anyway, these people help us out. They get us uptown. Guy turns his truck around. He's got the trailer there with the motorcycle on it. And we're sitting there. We get it off the trailer, and we're, we're sitting there doing something. Here come three teenage girls across the parking lot with a watermelon. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. They were having a party. <laughs> and so... What God taught me about this little area right there and so many other places was America's full of good people. See, there were some things that my heart needed to know. And so through the trouble we was having, everybody in this, everybody in this community, you, you wouldn't believe it. The, the bank president gave my son his phone number, his cell phone number, and told him if he, had, if he couldn't get anything done to call him tomorrow and he would help him. The president of the bank in, in the community. Okay. Man, I needed that in my own heart. Okay. We needed to have that problem. We didn't get to go through Memphis and we didn't get to go through Kansas. We had to reroute ourselves because we're we're running on a battery power, and that's it. And that took us to another place, and that was Kentucky. And we got to see firsthand the pain that these people are having in Kentucky. You see, going back to the tribulations and the trouble that Paul's talking about right there, the things that happen to us, they happen to us for the furtherance of other people, for the furtherance of the gospel, is to help instruct us. And we need to be paying attention to what's going on around us and how God is using this. Not that God's angry with me, but God's changing my direction to give me an opportunity to minister to somebody. 
Paul talks to them about Macedonia. We talked about this the last time I was here before I left. But Macedonia is where Paul first brings the gospel to the, United, uh, to, to the uh, Gentiles, really, when he comes to Europe. And he had the Macedonia call from Turkey, and, and, and God calls him over there. Anita and I, we had the privilege of meeting a lady from Macedonia. She was really interesting back in the spring. But, but he brings it over there, and you have the first convert, Lydia. Okay, But then he, has, he, he casts the demon out of the, the slave girl, and then he gets arrested, and then Judaizers, and he gets beat, and all this kind of stuff. You know, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about? But yet Paul didn't see that as tragedy. He seen that as God was opening doors for him to spread the gospel. And that's what we got to look at. We got to look at our at our life, not that these bad things are punishment from God, but these bad things that's coming along is so doors will be open to us. And there'll be effectual doors that we can minister to others and we can learn ourselves. And both happened to us on this trip. I mean, it did. And I mean, it, I think if we look at things in that direction, it'll give us a whole new attitude. Let me tell you something. God's not a vindictive, uh, oh, shallow, uh, angry, God just waiting for you to mess up so he can thump you in the head. He's a loving, gracious God. He's benevolent, omnibenevolent, and you're his child. And yes, he chastens you, believe me, he chastens you, but just everything that happens to you is not chastening. Things that fall out to you is for your furtherance and for the furtherance of the gospel. Okay? And so we need to remember that. Let's look at our verse again. Great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. In the things that befell him, he was joyful. Now, I know y'all know this, but I'm going to tell you again. Happiness is is based on my what's going on outside of me. Y'all give me a $100 bill, I'm happy. I got me an ice cream cone, I'm happy. I got me a watermelon, I'm happy. Okay, it's based on the outward. Joy is based on the inward. Joy is deep-seated, and it's down inside of me. And it's based on who I am in Christ and what I have in Christ and these promises that are that Paul talks about beforehand, I can, I can be guaranteed of these promises because God said it. And that makes it a guarantee. Okay. So joy, when he says, I'm, I'm joyful in my tribulation, in, 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 in all of our tribulation, exceedingly joyful. It's not he's really happy with the external things that are going on. But he's happy with what God's done inside of him and what he knows he's doing through him. And that's what we need to concentrate, folks, on. I know a lot of you go through a lot more than I do. Had a lot more bumps in the road than I have. I'm just trying to help you. You know, I think about our folks. I, I think about Sharon and, and Tasha and others that just seem to keep, Mike, I mean, they just keep, they just keep getting hit and they get hit and they get hit. But God's doing something through them and he's doing something with them if they'll just let him see what he's doing, okay? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you for this day. I thank you so much for the opportunity again to be here with our church family tonight. And I pray uh, that the things we talked about tonight, I know that it's not the big, the big idea, this passage of Scripture. But Lord, it's, it's something that strikes my heart. It, it struck me as uh, the things that I had happened to us and the things that you used us uh, for while we were gone. Lord, I just uh, I pray that it will be a help to others. Lord, help us to look at what's going on around us. 
and not just be all concerned about ourselves, but see what you're doing in, in our life and through our situation that we might be real effective ministers of the gospel. Lord, I pray that you keep all our folks safe tonight as they go home. I pray that you'll help us to come Sunday looking uh, to meet with you. And I pray that we look for you to show up in a big way. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.